Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. We need to discuss what the purpose of Islamic Knot Group with the acronym ING means to us and to the Muslim youth of our communities and the world basically because ING Islamic Knot Group is aimed at rescuing our youth from the influence of negative music and um, un-Islamic, uh, let's see, what is it? Influences and the lyrics and the things that yes. is. And satanic influences, things that would lead them to have negative lives and also participate in un-Islamic activities. And so we're going to talk about where ING, what ING, what was the root or the foundation for why ING was started. The purpose of ING was to rescue the youth from un-Islamic influences such as the music, the dress, and whatever comes with the music and the dress are the attributes of that, which are things that are against Islam and its beliefs. So ING was created, created to bring the, some positiveness to being a Muslim, positiveness to being youth, and positiveness to expressing yourself in an Arabic or Islamic way, you could voice your love for the Holy Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and you could also make your peers join. See there was something positive and fun to do while saying that or reciting Nasheed or reciting that for the Holy Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The motivation or the inspiration behind this endeavor is honestly it's with my murshid, my spiritual guide and he's the one who taught me and my companion here he's the one who taught us how to sing he's the one who taught us how to teach other young people how to be more positive how to grow how to perform how to praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in song form and how to praise the Holy Last Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in song form through Hamdu Sana Bari Ta'ala wa Nati Rasuli Maqbool which is songs of love and glorification for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the Holy Last Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Okay, so we're going to talk about the positive um, versus the negative um, effects of lyrics and listening to un-Islamic mu music. If you Google or put in a search about the negative effects of un-Islamic music, you see possessions, mental illness, mental diseases, sicknesses, all kinds of worldly perversions and things like that from listening to basically satanic music or music that has suggestive lyrics. If you look up any psychology class or anything like that, they'll tell you that people can be cued from being constantly fed negative, evil things or something that convinces their mind that whatever behaviors that they're doing or that they're hearing in the music is okay. And so suddenly these people start be behaving in these strange ways and you see them killing people or doing a lot of perversive things and you're like, where did they get that from? It came from listening to negative, um, evil music. Things that they have been hearing over and over again pumped into their brains throughout their day, throughout their weeks and years, and it starts affecting them physically, mentally, and spiritually. And you can see that. So just as you see that, you see the positive effect of making these knots and making the nasheed and praising Allah over and over again. You can see how it lightens the heart, it lightens the spirit, it brings health to the body. So you can understand from there where you can see the positiveness of it, and you can also see the negativity of Muslim children listening to um, un-Islamic music and things that they have endured, you know, from listening to this. Their, their, their souls are in such a, a stir, and, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't work well, and you can see that they're having troubles, so many troubles in situations like this, all from listening to music that goes against what Allah has taught us and what... Our souls and our bodies are used to. We love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So therefore, we yearn for this this praise of him, this nasheed, this na'at. We yearn for this in our souls and in our hearts. And you can see 
that when you go opposite to that, you can see the trouble that it causes in their hearts and in their lives and in their minds and everything like that. So it's very important to keep the children away from such negative and evil um, influences. In my experience, working around people who have listened to both Islamic and non-Islamic music, I've seen, as a result, for those who have listened to Islamic music, they tend to have more upbeat personalities and more personalities that drive home the goal, which is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They tend to remember him more often when a, an issue occurs or a problem arises. They quickly remember mm -hmm. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they, they remember where to go with their problems and how to deal with them and how to uh, quickly find a solution for whatever the issue may be because they surround themselves by remembrance of the Almighty. Whereas the people that I've had experiences with as far as um, non-Islamic music, they'll listen to it to satisfy their base desires. And the problem therein is it's a temporary high. It is a temporary feeling of, of uh, being motivated. And then when they turn it off or when the song is ended, they feel worse than they started off feeling in the first place. Because why? It does not take you back to Almighty Allah SWT. You have so many songs out there. And for every feeling that you have, there is probably a song out there that can relate to your feeling. And it's only temporary. It's from the time that the song starts until it ends, however long that may be, that you will feel good. However, remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, listening to these na'at and nasheeds, it almost doesn't matter what language it's in. When you let that penetrate your heart, it's a lasting feeling. And it gives, it brings such ease. It brings about such tranquility. No one can touch you after that. No one can say anything that's going to bother you. Why? Because if you have in your heart Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, there is no room for shaitan. There is no room for nafsi amara. There is no room for all the distractions, all the worldly distractions that we have here. You won't have any space for it because why? You filled your heart with tranquility of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's presence. We'll have a slideshow and show you different groups who have been very successful. They've come together. They, they dress in uniform. However, we don't go too far and we don't use string and wind instruments. We have so many successful stories from young people and they can, they can tell you themselves how IMG has been very beneficial and how forming their own groups has been very helpful as far as when they're out of school in the summer, everyone's looking for something to do. So when you have ING and you start to really put it together and say, okay, I can write this. I know so-and-so, she can help me with this. Oh, I know him, he can do this. We can come together and really make something positive out of thin air. And then here we are with the Islamic Na'at groups. So um, my experience with the youth that came together in the summer of 2015 was so amazing to me. I saw so many um, youth from the ages of 12 to, what was it, 18? 18. 18 years old. And they tried so hard to be the best. You know, they, they, they awed, they, they wooed, they did everything to, the, to express their love for Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. They dress in beautiful colors, beautiful colors. The lyrics to the songs were so heartwarming and heart touching. And it was so nice to see what positive thing can come out of a positive outlet that is kept is reinforced by parents, by peers, and by those in the community w w through Islamic knots and through expressing yourself through nasheed and things like this, it was so nice to see that they were happy with it. They were happy, they were proud, they were actually, they had pride about their Islam 
their dress. They had pride about making their dress the best dress while dressed in modest in a good way from the young men and the young ladies. They all dress modestly and they express themselves in such beautiful ways. So once they did that and they came out, those who came out on top, even the ones who didn't win, they were still happy to have been there, to have made it to perform and to show others. And they would want to go back home and they said, next year, this person in my community is going to be on our group. This person in our community is going to be doing this and coming to visit you all and stuff like that. And so this is what ING has fostered. It has fostered a foundation for the youth to grow. There are roses in the garden, and if they get trampled or they don't have proper care, it will die. And that's what the Islamic Knot Group is trying to do, is trying to make sure that the children are nurtured in the proper way so that they bloom, and they bloom with the love of the Holy Rasul, so oh, Islam. Okay. They bloom with their praises for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and they also have that pride about Islam. Something that you don't see on mainstream media or you don't hear in the music videos and stuff like that or you don't see this propagated on television. So alhamdulillah, they use this outlet, you know, and it's so good to see that and to see the positiveness of it and to see that they're willing to strive and they're willing to try to break away from these things as opposed to falling down and just giving themselves into the un-Islamic influences in the music. So we hope that this information was beneficial to you about the Islamic Knot groups and why it was formed. Inshallah, you can use this as a platform for your children, for your friends, or for your companions, or anyone that you may know who is interested in helping other people to remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وما علينا إلا البلاغ المبين صلى الله على خير خلقه نور عشه محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه بارك السلام عليك آمين.